that next Wednesday, on Wednesday week, and uh, congratulations on what you've achieved so far. Thanks for joining us. No problems. Thanks, guys. All the best. Well, more ACL after the break as we hear from Raw coach Rado Vidicic. Don't go away. Fortunes for Australia and the other ACL representatives. The Mariners recorded a stunning win over Tianjin Teda to stay alive, but the roar crashed out after a heavy defeat in Tokyo. The game was the first in charge for Rado Vidasic, and here's what he made of the performance. Um, you know, we, we tried to change a few things and, uh, you know, we worked very hard on that. So, you know, it, it disappointed to lose, but to, to see that, uh, that we have got so much to learn, we've got so much ahead of us, um, you know, it's very encouraging. Yeah, obviously there's, the, there's that transition period and there's going to be a transition period, but if you look at the key principles of our game, they still haven't changed. The way that we like to press, the way that we like to rotate our players, the way that we like to keep the ball moving and, and create space for one another, that still doesn't change. Yeah, obviously Ange has the, you know, he has a culture, he has the principles, he has a philosophy. Um, you know, everyone bought into that philosophy, and that, and that included Rado. Rado was the person that that uh, assisted Ange with the uh, with the rotations, with the tactics, with the with the way that we train, with the way that we play. So, th there's no better person within our club that that, that knows that system. And, and now Rado has the opportunity to, to create his own little spin on the, on the system. And you know, he tweaked a couple of things tonight. And and again, I think the the team that made the the, the least mistakes tonight won, and that was Tokyo. So, you know, uh, what we have achieved this year, we're going to definitely try to achieve next year uh, from, result, from, from a results point of view. But we definitely need to develop our game uh, much, much more. So that is a, a big thing that we're going to work very hard on. Obviously, we need to uh, bring in a few players that, that will help us to maybe be a little bit more effective in, in, in certain parts of the field. Um, and, um, you know, really looking forward to, to those challenges. Rado Vidicic talking after his first game in charge. Uh, Foz and Zdrilla, let's talk about uh, the Raw and, uh, and their performance. Uh, uh, firstly, Foz, from you, what, what did you see, if anything, that Rado was doing differently uh, to Ange Postacoglu? Well, you've heard the comments from both of them. I think they, they really sum it up very well, and that is that the principles of what they were doing and I assume what they're going to continue to do are, remain the same. And, um, and that means movement of the players. What will change is just where they move, when they move, and who moves. Uh, and that's very dependent on, uh, you know, particularly how he sets up his midfield. He had Bratton and Pardalou sitting at the base, so he just uh, basically uh, uh, inverted the triangle, so he played with two guys at the base and one further ahead. And uh, that about, can change... What about Broich? Broich looked to me like he had some kind of freer role. Well, when you play with that guy, particularly coming in behind, then he's got to try and support both sides, which can be, it's, it's definitely a change. Uh, it's a change for the player that plays there for sure. The trouble was, I agree with Smith there. I thought, in fact, for large parts, I thought it was a very good performance. I was impressed. Yeah, and, yeah. Uh, but just a couple of defensive mistakes. Like on that first goal, one of the uh, fullbacks actually tried to play the offside trap uh, when two guys were behind him. 
um, and uh, and they got caught. Um, and as Ange said last week, the difference is these people will take advantage of those errors. But in terms of attack, they created a lot of opportunities. Their movement was still very good. Uh, and for instance, um, it's not a huge uh, change, but. It does affect the team, but that's the way Bayern Munich play with mm. the two at the base of the midfield. Very common. Yeah. Mm. Zrilla, what did you see? I mean, this is a very good team they played against. <laughs> very good. Out of yeah. the Japanese teams that we've seen yeah. in, uh, in, in all of the groups, this team is by far all, the, the probably, best one. Probably uh, in all the years. It, it, that they, were, they were amazing, particularly mm. when we saw them up close um, when they played uh, in Queensland. Yeah. Uh, fantastic. That was in the first group game, and I just thought that uh, that was just another level. Seeing how the Raw play, and then you see FC Tokyo, that's the next level what we need to aspire to. Uh, but in saying, uh, just on the appointment of Rado, I think it's great. He knows the system. Foz was talking about it. He knows how they play. He's talking about taking them to another level, which I think to play in the Asian Champions League, you're going to need because we've seen that uh, they, they look, arguably they've had the toughest group as well. So they're the team that we expected well, to have. go through. They've had yeah. the toughest group, yeah, they have. but they have yeah. played very well in there. So they, they need to take it to that very next well. level. Just the, to answer your question though, or just to build on that, I think the one thing that he's tried to change, I think, and we'll see in the next game, and after that we'll, we'll pull out some analysis, I think he's tried to take the team with a little bit more vertical play centrally. We mm. talked about it a bit before. He shifted the midfield so that they can go wide and around, but they can also play through. And to do that, often the Raw had a big hole where there's no one sitting. Mm. Now, with that midfield, they'll have someone in there, so they always have the ability to go through. And that was the real beauty of mm. Tokyo. All right, guys, I want to talk about the Mariners. They, uh, they had a 5-1 win, but, but the, the big news on them today is that uh, Graham Arnold uh, has announced that he's staying at the Mariners and oh, he's huge. not joining yeah. Sydney FC. There were different press releases from, uh, from both clubs. Uh, we might just show you uh, what they said. Uh, what uh, Arnie said is, I have decided to see that th the three-year term out because of the loyalty and respect I have for the players, the chairman, the staff and all the supporters. Uh, of the club, Sydney FC, on the other hand, said, we had asked Graham for a final answer by today, but we were presented with some last-minute requests, which we were not prepared to meet. That came from Sydney FC. So yep, Gary Cole. Uh, there, there, there are some differences in the, in the two, two versions. But <coughs> were you surprised? What, what, what's, yeah. what are your thoughts? I was surprised. I thought he was going there for sure. Uh, I think most, most people did and had speculated. Uh, uh, but uh, for the Mariners, it's uh, unbelievable. Um, effort for them to keep him. Uh, clearly the players have all been behind him, the football um, and, and the success that he's brought them. Uh, so for, for them it's, uh, it's, it's brilliant. Um, he, he obviously has, has had a, um, a, a good time there. He's mentioned that, he's stated that um, and I, I guess for them it's, it's great that it's all settled. They've obviously had financial issues that have been talked about in the press. Um, well, it's good, it's, good. Uh, it, it's a good point, uh, isn't it Foz, that uh, they need the stability. Uh, because of these lingering rumours about mm. financial problems, uh, whether they exist or not, but they do need the stability of, of, a, of a coach uh, who's been with them now a couple of years. Yeah, um, I, look, I don't know. I don't know how the coach is, is going to influence what happens off the park. But I, I would say this: that for him to resign, no, I'm, I'm talking about the players need the sure. Need the, the players need stability, yeah. sure. But for him to resign, I, I think mm. what it says is it's a vote of confidence in the financial status of the club, and that's yeah. sort of what surprised me in a way because. Mm. He's sort of saying, he's now saying, well, I'm very confident in this club for the next couple of years. So that's great news for all of us. Of course for the fans, of course for the players, uh, and, uh, and also for him because he has a stable environment for himself in terms of his success. He, he knows the players already. There's no, there's no unknowns. Whereas if you go to Sydney FC, it's a total new fan base, total new expectations. It's a, it, it also actually has higher expectations whilst they haven't achieved them in the last couple of years. So, um, but you know, those two statements I, I think were telling. Um, you know, apparently there was some re-emergence re of some key terms he wanted today. So uh, yeah. it looks as though it may well have been the club who said, well, no, the deadline was today and that's not enough. But I'll tell you what, in Asia though, this was a, a, a decision that, yeah, a, a game and a performance which was really outstanding. Yeah. Um, and it's not often when Australian clubs, even against the Chinese, no. um, when they've been able to really uh, put down the hammer and uh, and score freely. So this was really wonderful to see. But it's not the first game against Nagoya as well. Um, we're talking again about the Japanese teams who have been under par, but they had a very good game against them, and they have to go now and beat them um, over in Japan. So, uh, but in this game, everything came together. They played very well. 
Uh, Pedge Bowich will be missing for the next game, which is the only blemish um, in that game. But uh, as you can see, they need to win their next game, which is against Nagoya, to, yeah, to get to the next round. Which is a tough one. Huh? Have you, can That's they tough. do it, do you think, Foss? Well, they certainly can. Um, it, it's tough. Hmm. It's tough. So yeah. the good thing is they've come into the last game with the opportunity to do it. He'll be pleased with that. Uh, the fact that it's ha away from home doesn't make it easy. Um, they'll have to be at their absolute best. But I, I agree, when Nagoya were here, mm. I was pretty unimpressed by mm. them. Uh, it was a good Mariners performance, but it wasn't what I expected from Nagoya, who've done so well in recent years under uh, Pixie. Yeah. Uh, and uh, FC Tokyo are a, a, a total uh, level enough. above. Mm -hmm. As I think the best we've seen, arguably, was Gambosaka, wasn't it? When, uh, when they the won big. the title and uh, you know, they, they beat Adelaide and in the, the final. final. That was a football team. It was. All right, it's half time, but still to come, all the action from England as Martin Tyler runs the rule over a controversial and dramatic 48 hours. Euro 2012 is a month away and SBS will bring you nightly highlights, delayed matches and four key live games, plus full online coverage. It all kicks off on June the 8th, don't miss it. And one man who will be there for SBS is Martin Tyler and he joins us now live from London after a dramatic weekend in England. Martin, delighted to see you. We'll start at Wembley. You were at the cup final for us, of course, and another huge triumph for the Blues. Well, it's amazing, isn't it? It's like their second home. They're talking about moving to a new ground in Battersea in uh, southwest London. They should move to northwest London and play their games at Wembley, I think, because they are um, you know, unbeatable there, it seems, to win the F FA Cup for four, fourth time in six years. And Drogba has scored in all the finals. Um, this was very early on, of course, uh, Ramirez who can't play in the Champions League final, making the most of his uh, FA Cup final outing. Poor defending by Jose Enrique and Reina, the goalkeeper. Uh, and then uh, Frank Lampard had an excellent game. Drogba doing what he does still, 34 years old. Some talk that this will be it for him this season. He's been offered a new deal, but he hasn't accepted it. He wants two years. It's the old thing, the club won't won because he's... Uh, a bit long in the two. Andy Carroll came on and changed the game for Liverpool. Um, very good finish. Uh, and Chelsea had played a hard game on Wednesday against Carroll's old club, Newcastle, on a sticky pitch. And they looked really weary at the end. Um, they got through by the skin of their teeth, by the, I suppose, the width of Petr Cech's goalkeeping gloves in the end. Um, but over the, over the 90 minutes, they, they deserved to win it. And John Terry first captain at one club to hold up the FA Cup four times and this time he had to do it with cracked ribs so um, well done to all concerned with Chelsea Football Club. Uh, Roberto Di Matteo jumping for joy there. Uh, what's his future? Has he been offered the job yet? What are the, what are the murmurs? Martin are you hearing anything? Well, I'm hearing the usual thing. Um, don't rely on anything because it's Chelsea. It's one man's decision. Roman Abramovich, the uh, Russian oligarch who uh, owns the club and makes all the big uh, decisions. Uh, obviously, Di Matteo has put himself in the frame. Funnily enough, they, they're struggling in the league. They've got a game. They play Liverpool again in the just over 24 hours' time in the uh, Premier League at Anfield. Uh, and because of the results which